There was a decorated general with a heart of gold That likened him to all the stories he told Of past battles won and lost and legends of old A seasoned veteran in his own time On the battlefield he gained respectful fame With many medals of bravery and stripes to his name He grew a beard as soon as he could to cover the scars on his face And always urged his men on but on the eve of a great battle with the infantry and dream, the old general tossed in his sleep and wrestled with its meaning. He awoke from the night to tell what he had seen and walked slowly out of his tent. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Today's objectives are to identify the phases that make up mitosis and meiosis and to identify how mitosis and meiosis are different. The first process that we're going to go over is mitosis, which is the reproduction of body cells. We're going to talk about several different phases uh, from start to finish. Uh, the first phase that we're going to talk about is interphase, and this is where cell duplicates uh, DNA. Uh, we talked about DNA replication in a previous lesson. This is what goes on in interphase. It gets the cell ready uh, to reproduce uh, additional body cells. Prophase is the phase where the chromosomes spiral and the DNA tightly wraps around a protein called a histone. At metaphase the chromosomes are now towards the middle of the cell and we have centrioles that have spindle fibers that are starting to connect to the center of the chromosomes called the centromere. After that anaphase is where the chromosomes split apart and is pulled by those spindle fibers and is starting to be pulled towards the the poles of the cell. Poles are just uh, describing north and south here. They're getting pulled apart. Uh, telophase is where the DNA unwinds and the nuclei reforms. And then Cytokinesis is when the uh, two cells split apart to make their own cells, so the cell splits into two cells. Mitosis begins as the long threads of DNA in the nucleus start to coil. Having already replicated, these threads emerge as the double strands we know as chromosomes. Meanwhile, Protein fibers grow from the migrating centrioles, forming a latticework of spindles. For reasons scientists don't fully understand, the nuclear membrane suddenly disintegrates. With amazing accuracy, a spindle from each centriole attaches itself to each of the chromosomes. Assisted by the protein fibers, the chromosomes move center stage. In a microscopic tug of war, the spindles pull each chromatid toward opposite poles. Other spindles push against each other in a ratcheting action that stretches the cell. The chromosomes then unwind and the nuclear membranes reform. With mitosis complete, the nuclei and cytoplasm separate, creating two new cells in this ongoing cycle that sustains all life. So, you just got done watching a video that shows you mitosis in a much clearer fashion than what I explained. A couple things I want to go over, though, for the reproduction of body cells. Uh, we start in interphase. Um, with a regular old cell but we end with two exact copies it's very important for you guys to note that in the reproduction of body cells during mitosis the results of cell multiplication is two genetically identical daughter cells so the cells that come from the original cell are called daughter cells the last thing that I would like to go over with you about mitosis is the idea of being diploid, the cell being diploid, which means 2N. It means that it has two copies of each chromosome, one uh, full set. And a full set consists of a chromosome from mom and a chromosome from dad. So when we begin this process, we have a diploid cell. And when we end, we have two identical diploid uh, daughter cells.
Our next process is meiosis, which is the reproduction of sex cells. Uh, in meiosis, we have two different stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 is very similar to mitosis in that the phases are the same. So we still go through uh, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. But the major difference is we have crossing over uh, right here, right before uh, metaphase. And uh, what crossing over does is it causes a little bit of genetic uh, variation or genetic diversity because mom and dad's chromosomes, they cross over and when they pull apart, some of mom's chromosomes go with dad's and vice versa. In meiosis two, those chromosomes, so we talked about being diploid. We have a diploid cell and after the first stage of meiosis, we ha still have that diploid cell okay but then in meiosis 2 uh, these chromosomes pull apart again and we end up with a haploid uh, cell four of them which are the gametes which are eggs and sperm so in meiosis we have chromosomes that divide a second time so in meiosis 1 it's just like mitosis divides one time uh, in meiosis 2 it divides again so we're either having uh, four eggs or four sperm depending if uh, this uh, person is male or female. Alright, so let's check out a meiosis video. The cell prepares for meiosis just as it does for mitosis. But as the DNA condenses, each chromosome finds its homologous counterpart. These matching pairs of chromosomes hold equivalent genetic information, one set from mother and one from father. Next comes the first shuffle of nature's genetic deck. The two homologues trade genes in a process called crossing over. This forms new hybrid chromosomes. The spindles then place maternal and paternal chromosomes randomly on each side of midline. It is another shuffle that can lead to a host of different genetic outcomes. Finally, spindle fibers pull the homologs apart. This leaves the sister chromatids intact. With twice the amount of genetic information the cells will need, nature must cut the genetic deck in two. The second division produces four unique sets of chromosomes. Because they carry half the genetic information, we call these haploid cells. Many of them will mature into sperm and eggs, the reproductive cells called gametes. So the highlights of that video is really in meiosis 1 where crossing over occurs. And this is what's responsible for the genetic variation. The highlight of meiosis 2 is the second division that happens that makes the gametes, which are the sperm and egg cells. So we start with a diploid cell and then we end with four gametes, uh, which are haploid. So here's a little chart that I made on mitosis and meiosis. It just shows you uh, purposes, the similarities, the differences of both processes. So the purpose of my mitosis is for growth and repair, where meiosis is for gamete formation for sperm and eggs. Uh, in both processes, the parent cell are both diploid. In mitosis, we end with two identical daughter cells, which are both diploid. But in meiosis, we end with four uh, gametes, which are all haploid. So they have half the number of chromosomes. In mitosis, we have one cell division. In meiosis, we have two cell divisions. Uh, in mitosis, we have the separation of chromosomes into sister chromatids. In meiosis, we have the separation into homologous uh, chromosomes. Uh, in meiosis 1, in sister chromatids in meiosis 2. 
and mitosis we do not have crossing over where in meiosis we do and that's what gives us our genetic variation hopefully in today's tutorial uh, you were able to identify the different phases that are in meiosis and mitosis uh, a lot of them are the same but uh, meiosis is a little bit more complex and hopefully you were able to see how mitosis and meiosis are different if you guys have any questions, please make sure that you bring it to class.